Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. Today, scratch resistant and water resistant oversized ceramic luxury divers. We're talking Blompom 50 Fathoms Bathyscaphe and Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Offshore Diver. Let's start with the established power in the space. Now the watch right here represents something of a long running hit. The Bathyscaphe originally created for the modern market at 2013's Basel World represents a revival of some styling cues from past Blompom dive references, whereas the Royal Oak Offshore represents a fairly faithful translation of the 1993 Royal Oak Offshore concept into this, the 2013 Royal Oak Offshore Diver 15707 CE. So the model bowed in 2013. This is a design that's time tested as of today out to over a quarter of a century. So it stood the ravages of age quite well, transforming from the original precious metal and steel into ceramic. You can see it's a fairly easy oversized watch to wear on the wrist. The diver is thinner than the chronograph because there's no modular complication. It's also easy to wear on the diver strap, which is more flexible than the Hornback Alligator or any offshore bracelet. You can see 42 millimeters in diameter on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist. This is an easy one to wear. It's not as thick as you think. 13.9 millimeters because of the lack of any modular complication. This one actually sits fairly flat and will duck under quite a few shirt cuffs. Lug to lug is where this one spreads its wings. It's, it's going to be just over 57 millimeters link to link if you include those double plus end links and if you just measure the case across the wrist it's going to be 54 millimeters lug to lug so it's a large watch but all in ceramic it sits light on the wrist that's the thing about ceramic it's far lighter than steel it almost feels like a composite or a carbon case now jumping in close you can see that the strap on this one is handsome it features fluting and strakes it's a wonderful cut design that features a handsome tapered bevel that actually follows the polished bevel of the lugs it's very soft supple and substantial here you can see a DLC blackened buckle that comes with the watch. One feature of the Blancpain that is to the advantage of the 50 Fathoms Bathyscaphe is the use of a ceramic buckle with a ceramic watch. AP gives us PVD steel and here it's attractive but it's not as durable as ceramic. At this price point, $23,900, I would have expected full ceramic. But the watch makes up for lost time with its case finish. As you can see, the execution of ceramic at Audemars Piguet is exactly the same level expected of titanium, of platinum, of gold, and of steel. Look at the complexity of this assembly of the crown which is polished on its outer face and satin on its flanks. Look at those crown guard structures with hairline bevels down their side, the expanding bevel along the flanks of the lugs, the satin finish on their hoods. Look at the contrast and the sharp break between the satin finished hood of the bezel and the rounded and polished flanks. This is ceramic taken to the level of state of the art. Audemars Piguet giving you a deep dial featuring the mega tapisserie. It's stamped and lacquered on the offshores. It's cut on a pen to grab on the Royal Oaks, but you can see the bigger, chunkier hobnail fits the watch well. There's a sloping ray hot, and the movement in this watch not being modular doesn't include the usual sunken tunnel for the date. We have an internal rotating bezel, so absolute security against accidental displacement. A screw down crown up at 10 o'clock allows you to rotate the bezel, and because the bezel is out of the way of scratches and scuffs, it can be fully loomed by night. Line it up with that minute hand, you have an impromptu 0 to 60 minute timer. I don't see why one would ever need a Royal Oak offshore chronograph and 300 meters water resistant against the offshore's 100. That is the offshore chronograph. Now under the case back, you can see the movement, Audemars Piguet manufacturer caliber 3120, stop seconds, quick set date, 22 car carat bi-directional engraved golden winding mass on ceramic bearings, stop seconds, quick set date, tech features include a 60 hour power reserve, a 21 6 beat rate, but a giant balance with a huge moment of inertia to maintain accuracy, a free sprung gyromax style balance with a full bat wing style balance bridge to resist shock on the wrist, 40 joules, handsomely finished, nicely executed, valet de jeu watchmaking at its best. Okay, let's talk about the 50 Fathoms Bathyscaphe. Now both of these watches bowed at 2013's trade show, the SIHH giving us the Royal Oak Offshore and the Bathyscaphe bowing at the 2013 Basel World, but the model you see here bowed at Basel 2016. This is the Ocean Commitment. Full ceramic with ceramic bezel, ceramic case, even ceramic buckle. This watch is 43 millimeters. I'm going to show it to you on the wrist. It does appear to be a thinner and flatter watch than the Royal Oak, although when you compare them side by side, they are almost exactly the same. 13.9 millimeters thick, 43 millimeters in diameter. Zoom out a little bit so you can see the watch in proportion. Try to give you a better sense of how the watch wears on the wrist. On my 16 centimeters circumference wrist, I can tell there's 
there's less material here. The case uses less material, so it feels even lighter than the Royal Oak. The spacing between the lugs is a broad 23 millimeters, and note the watch will take a standard strap, while the Royal Oak will not. Lug to lug, it's a nicely constrained 49.5 millimeters, so I can recommend this watch for a wrist as small as 14 centimeters circumference. The strap's a handsome piece. You can see it's sailcloth, almost indestructible, nicely bolstered, thickly made, folded edge, monotone stitch, navy blue, a vulcanized rubber on the underside. This will be a long wearing and highly durable strap. Moving in a little bit closer, you can appreciate the fact that the watch includes a conventional diving bezel. It's easy to access. How do you turn it? Just like that. No need to activate a crown that needs to be threaded out and then turned. This is simple. You just grip it and rip it. I love this setup. It's my preference. The case itself is nicely executed and the finishing on the ceramic is handsome and well chosen. It's basically the metal case re-executed in ceramic. Being able to finish these sharp bevels and these sharp breaks is impressive, but this is not the artisanal level of finish you get on the Royal Oak. The bezel itself features blue ceramic with liquid metal index and numeral inlays, so the two metals will stay put and bonded forever. I'm going to bring in my polishing cloth to relieve this one of my finger oils. The dial is far more dynamic on this watch. Rather than a stamped and lacquered surface, it is a sunburst and wonderfully bright. You can see the slightly blackened hands, vintage style block with extension, and then the minimalist, almost nipple style indices with batons for the four corners. The dial is a blue sunburst and an exceptional one. Only you can choose which date layout you prefer. On the Audemars Piguet, it takes the place of an index on the Blanc it sits between the 4 and the 5, but it is a monotone disc, quite discreet. You have the stop seconds, you have the quick set date, you have a big crown style without any sheer guards as the bathyscaph is the vintage inflected, the reference 5000 you see here, a bit more nostalgically tinged than the standard 50, 15, 50 fathoms. Turn it all over and things improve markedly. Still 300 meters water resistant, that is in common. Ceramic construction is in common between the two, but what you have here is a much nicer execution. You can see the mirrored bevels on the edge of each bridge. Those are rounded, optically smooth hand chamfers. It's not the machine bevel that you see on the Audemars Piguet. The same treatment has been bestowed on the jewel countersinks. If you look on the base plate, you'll see an even engine turning, a beautiful frosted 18 karat mass, and you can see it's been blackened. Note the channeling around its edge with the satin finish and then the frosted center. Also, the screw heads have been black polished with chamfered slots, as good as anything you'll find in Geneva. Caliber 1315 with three mainspring barrels and a 120 hour 5 day power reserve. It beats away at 4 hertz like a conventional watch does, but remember the AP is 3 hertz, so we have a higher beat rate here. We don't have a full balance bridge, but it is a free sprung balance for shock resistance, and though you can't see it, there is a silicon hairspring for anti-magnetism. Three mainspring barrels, and the bridge over them beautifully decorated with a spiral dressage or, or straight graining that's been slightly tucked up and whipped, so it has a little bit of a curvature of its edge. The execution of the wheels is beautiful. The screws immaculate and mirrored, so this is both a more technically advanced movement with silicon hairspring, higher beat rate, longer power reserve, and six position adjustment. Note that, six position adjustment. AP claims no specific adjustment of its movement. So let's talk about the advantages of these two watches. Starting with the offshore. Okay, first and foremost, and far and away, this is the watch with the image, the status, the prestige. As much as I love Blancpain, Audemars Piguet is a platinum name, not even a blue chip. And Royal Oak Offshore is a core Audemars Piguet. A full black ceramic diver is très chouette. This is a timepiece that is absolutely sensational. Not quite monolithic due to its structure and its sensitive use of differential finish. It's a handsome, complex, and compelling form. And while I'm not normally into the status aspect of luxury watches, with this piece it cannot be denied. The brand has soul. Independently owned and run by the founding families from 1875 to the present day, this is anything but another big brand umbrella group possession. It's not simply a number on a balance sheet. Let's talk about wrist presence. Big, black, and blockish. Though the watches are not that different in diameter or thickness, this one does have substantially more span across the wrist. And the contrast between the titanium plots and the black of the strap and the ceramic case is quite dramatic. Plus, the shocks of orange make this one pop on the wrist. Let's talk about 
case finish. We discussed it briefly, but this is finished with the same artisanal attention to detail and excruciating energies and experience dedicated to any conventional Royal Oak or Offshore. The Blancpain looks as though it could have been machine finished. This watch, too, features a five-year warranty from Audemars Piguet. If you can still purchase one new, you're going to get a five-year warranty. Blancpain gives only two, extendable to three if you purchase from a boutique, Advantage AP. As a store of value in our test, this watch has no rival. This is the mark, selling new for 23900 selling pre-owned for twenty eight to 29000 Quite frankly, at this point, it's a borderline moneymaker. I don't know if that'll hold up through the next recession, but so far, it looks like a straight-up bargain at MSRP. Let's talk about the Blancpain first, better fit. The watch is narrower from lug to lug, so although they're about the same size in diameter and about the same size in thickness, this one just feels more natural on my wrist. It's lighter objectively, it's more compact objectively, it fits better, it looks better. Wrist smaller than 15 centimeters circumference, you want this watch, it's your only choice. I'll also mention the ease of vessel use. Why do we need that Rube Goldberg apparatus? This is simple, intuitive, and easy. Just use this. Okay, let's talk about the movement finish. The watch is rather rote externally. I said it could have been mechanically finished externally. Well, not on the case back. The case back is beautiful. The execution of this movement is the finest tradition of the Valet de Jeu. Audemars Piguet, fine, this is the finest. They're actually neighbors. They're within a stone, stone's throw of each other. And while Audemars Piguet has movements that are finished at this level, they are not the movements you find in the standard Royal Oaks and Offshore. Audemars Piguet will finish a 15202's 21 121 movement like this, but Blancpain gives you that kind of finish in a dive watch. Advantage Blancpain. Let's talk about technology. Okay, this movement features a higher beat rate, 28.8 versus 21.6 in the AP. Six position adjustment, one more than a chronometer. AP makes no promises about how many positions they adjust that movement. I'm sure it's competent, but this is beyond chronometer spec. Silicon hairspring to the AP's metal hairspring. 120 hour power reserve with triple barrels for even torque release and minimum loss of amplitude over the full duration of that power reserve. Advantage Blancpain tech on many counts. Let's talk about buying this watch new. You're going to pay $12,860. Let's talk about buying this watch used. You're going to pay somewhere between nine and nine and a half thousand dollars So while it doesn't hold its value like the Audemars Piguet, this watch is a screaming bargain pre-owned. And if your price point doesn't quite include twice the value of this watch to buy the AP new, this is a perfectly sensible and satisfying purchase. Let's talk about Loom. You're going to see it right at the end, but this watch wins the loom shot by at least several car lengths, to use automotive terms, or in the terms of horse racing, like Secretariat. This would be my choice. It has more color. It has more tech. It has better loom. It offers more discretion, and its style is more versatile on the wrist. Plus, while I love an orange-inflected watch, this blue and gray combination simply stuns me. Scintillating and sensational, the Bathyscaphe Ocean Commitment, and by the way, beneficiary of a good cause, would be my choice. Both of these watches are handsome. Both of them are made in the Valet du Jeu. Both of them are scratch resistant, water resistant, and diveable. You guys tell me in the comments below which of these big bruisers you would put on your wrist. Okay, Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Offshore Diver, Blancpain Bathyscaf. See, the diver's full bezel is loomed, whereas you only have the luminescent pearl on the Bathyscaf, but the dial is so bright it makes up for every possible shortcoming. Between the two, I have to give this to the Bathyscaf.